out at every Singapore shopping mall, there's a store or two that sells sweet promises in a cup. In front of them, lines of excited customers willing to wait just to get their hands on one. Thank you. I'm talking about bubble tea. We all love this sweet treat so much that they designed this just for this. So in this episode, I want to find out what's behind our obsession with this drink, which we already know is loaded with sugar and calories, and what this addiction could be doing to our health. Milk tea from bubble tea stores was the most popular beverage order on delivery company Deliveroo's platform in 2019, ahead of Coke and coffee. In 2019, Deliveroo sold around half a million cups of milk tea, a 46% increase from the year before. And that's just from one delivery company. But that's just delivery orders. I wonder how big bubble tea really is in Singapore. Helping me make sense of it is marketer Joanne Ho, who's monitored the trend since the first bubble tea landed here in the late 1990s. Uh, this is the new tea. Is it? These are our signatures. Okay, I'll give you She's launched at least 10 bubble tea brands in Singapore, including this one at Suntec City. Needless to say, she's also a big fan of the drink. Guess on how many stores there are and how many brands. Bubble tea stores? I don't know, like uh, 200 maybe? It's double. Double? 400? It's more than 400 and more that's 400. only the major brands. And you want to guess how many brands there are? 20? <gasps> okay, more than double again. <laughs> it's nearly 50. Wow, okay. These are just the big brands which means they're still individual shops. Exactly. Okay. And remember during the lockdown for yeah, bubble yeah. tea as well, people literally went out to the stores to kind of queue for them. And how did this whole craze begin? So it began, I think, in the 90s. Do you remember there's this doll in the night markets where they shake okay. the bubble, the tea? And actually, it wasn't bubble tea. It's actually froth in the tea. Oh, I always thought the pearls were what they call the bubbles. Yeah, in the beginning, there were no pearls. It's froth in tea. It started with that. And then the bubble burst. About 2006, it came back again. Because I think the budget flight started, people right. go to Taiwan, and at that point it came with bubbles. So it's like bubble tea. Are we looking at this becoming a part of our culture? Like, you know, having cafe culture, having a coffee every day? I'm very confident it is here to stay. Yeah. Because a lot of my friends, our customers, my clients' customers, they have a cup of bubble tea every day. Some of them every week. It's just like people having their kopi every day. It's, right. it's a necessity. <laughs> Bubble tea first landed in Singapore from Taiwan in the 1990s and has gone through a few waves. About two years ago, competitive retailers introduced more creative and innovative flavours, all fancier and much more colourful than the original pearl milk tea. Now I see flavours like Milk foam alasan, an oolong tea topped off with creamy milk, mango matcha latte, a blend of mango puree with green tea and milk, creme brulee strawberry latte, a combination of the French dessert with strawberry, and strawberry taro latte, a sweet mix of taro milk with strawberry pieces. And as you can see, more creative bubble tea also means the price of bubble tea can now match that of gourmet coffee. So why are we hooked to an expensive drink that is also unhealthy? What do you like about bubble tea? I like the milk tea especially. I like the fur itself. Okay. Fur is very soft. Why do you like bubble tea? Because of the fur. How many cups of bubble tea are you buying today? Two, one for each of you, is it? Yeah. How often do you drink bubble tea? In one week, how many cups will you drink? Three. Three a week? How would you order, you tell me? Uh, double pearl. One week, how many cups? Three cups. Three cups? Ah. It's no secret bubble tea is loaded with sugar. A cup of milk tea with pearls typically contains eight teaspoons of sugar. 
That's two teaspoons or 33% more than the daily recommendation from the World Health Organization for both adults and children. A cup of brown sugar pearl milk tea contains even more sugar, about 18.5 teaspoons. That is three times the daily sugar recommendation from the WHO. And let's not forget the calories. A medium-sized cup of milk tea with pearls contains 355 calories. That's about one-fifth of the recommended daily calories for a healthy adult. The tapioca pearls, which seems to be the favorite among fans, make up a third of the 355 calories. We know consuming all sugar and empty calories is not good for the waistline. But I want to know what else our bubble tea addiction is doing to our bodies. So to find out, I have to be part of the problem. And for one month, I've decided I will drink the same amount of bubble tea a typical bubble tea lover in Singapore drinks. And to arrive at that magic number, I had earlier asked bubble tea lovers how regularly they drank bubble tea. So every week, how many cups will you drink? Two cups. Maybe one in a weekday, one in the weekend. So I've heard some people like go almost every day after school. During exams week, I usually drink everything. It's a good snack. I posted a poll on my social media asking the same. So it ranges from once every week to more than four times a week. In fact, some of them even said they drink bubble tea every day. I guess if I take all that into account, the average will be about three times a week. Well, I guess that's the amount of bubble tea I will be subjecting my body to. Helping me track the effects on my body is Dr. Vincent Chia. He's a family physician with an interest in men's health and well-being. He's also someone who has cut sugar out of his diet and has never, ever drunk bubble tea. So doctor, I'm going to go on this bubble tea experiment. What will you be monitoring in my body during that time? The main parameters in a blood test I'm looking at are uh, your sugar levels, your lipid level, your cholesterol level in other words, or level of inflammation in your blood as well as your liver function test. And why look at those areas? Over time, a high intake of sugar and refined carbohydrates in the form of the toppings can lead to a uh, deleterious effect in the blood, like raising the blood sugar. Mm -hmm. Sugar intake has been associated with increased inflammation in the bloodstream, which is again a bad thing. I got my blood drawn, blood pressure measured, and weight and height taken. What else can I expect to happen to me? Well, with the sugar in the bubble tea, you can get sugar spikes when you take it too often. Mm -hmm. So when your blood sugar goes up and down, up and down throughout the day, you might have mood changes. Mm -hmm. Well, you might feel tired when sugar is high and maybe you'll feel irritable when it's low. So I might be really cranky throughout this whole shoot. <laughs> we'll find out and see. My experiment starts today. I'm choosing drinks as they are with no reduced sugar. Uh, what sugar level can I get you? I'm gonna go 100%. Okay. There you have it, this is my very first cup of bubble tea. I got a, a, a matcha tea with a whole bunch of stuff in it and... Mm. So for the next 30 days, three cups of this stuff a week. Well, let's see what it does to, to me. I start off my challenge feeling curious about what effects, if any, this bubble tea experiment will have on me. And as the days go by, I start to look forward to my next sugar fix. Which makes me wonder if there is something else behind this beverage that has got us hooked. Another day, another cup of bubble tea. It's mid-afternoon and normally I go out, I grab a cup of black coffee. I'm carrying out my bubble tea experiment with some trepidation. After all, bubble tea is not my beverage of choice. Mm. Somehow, that first sip always shoots this message to my brain which just screams out, this is so sweet! But after a few more sips, of course you don't realise that anymore. 
It's mid-afternoon and normally I'd go out, I'd grab a cup of black coffee, I've been substituting it with bubble tea. Which got me thinking, is our collective love for bubble tea by choice or by design? I've arranged to meet Lim Siu Ru. She keeps a close eye on retail trends, especially on how retail businesses attract their customers. So our meeting place of choice? Quite fittingly, this cafe, which specialises in, you guessed it, bubble tea. What is it about bubble tea and bubble tea shops you know, that keep us coming back for more? Now increasingly, bubble tea operators are looking at expanding into cafe concepts. For example, in terms of the colours, it is very bright, it yeah. is very appealing. It is intended to um, captivate, for example, teenagers. So why don't we take a look around the shop? Okay, yeah, sure. Let me show you. Let's take a look at some of these colours. So in terms of basic colour psychology, we can see that yellow is one of those colours that actually makes us feel very happy, very cheerful. We can oh. also see pink, which is uh, very optimistic in terms of look and feel as well. If we're just walking by, yeah. in, this actually captures our eye, draws our attention, actually encourages us to drop by here to take a look as well. Actually, what about all this stuff here? What about the merchandise? They actually feature the very cute yeah. mascot. So, this actually encourages the target audience mm. who actually want to take a piece of this brand home with them. Having seasonal offerings offered by the brands encourages consumers to come by, check out the brand on a frequent basis to see what are some of those latest offerings that they have. So, how do all of these things add up to draw me back into the shop? So we can actually see that they have actually tapped on a multi-sensory appeal. Whether is it for consumers to actually taste the drink itself, to have a look and feel around the shop, to evoke positive uh, moods. We can also see that consumers are able to have a piece of this back home with them to trigger positive associations. And all these serve to remind consumers about the brand values, encourages them to keep coming back for more. Marketing plays a big part in our bubble tea obsession. And it's not surprising why bubble tea brands are willing to pour money into winning more fans. It's a lucrative market expected to grow exponentially, raking in some 1.1 billion Singapore dollars in the Asia Pacific last year. And this figure is expected to rise annually by 10% over the next seven years. And on social media, there's no escaping it. On Instagram alone, there are 2.1 million posts under the hashtag bubble tea. To put it in context, that's almost 20 times more social media posts compared to hashtag Singapore Sling. Many of these are organic content from bubble tea fans and marketeers who work with social media influencers like Daniel Ang of Daniel's Food Diary. They want to win over more consumers to bubble tea. I had noticed many of the people I spoke with at the bubble tea stores were youth, so I wanted to find out if bubble tea brands are focusing more of their attention on a younger demographic. So I understand you hmm. work with a lot of bubble tea brands and you help them with their marketing. What exactly do you do for them? So I'm a, I'm a food blogger, so okay. most people think that uh, food blogging is just being an influencer. We do more than that. We do the write-up, photos, editing, video editing. It's a whole 360 way of helping a brand to promote or to write about a piece. So when it comes to the mm. influencer marketing, yeah. how do they market something like bubble tea? Bubble tea is a, a little bit different because huh? it's not just a drink. It's not a lifestyle. It's a drink that gives you comfort. It's a drink that makes you feel hip. You know that young people, they like to use the word YOLO. If yeah. you don't have it, you have ne never tried it, you're not part of the group. I think there's this part of peer pressure as well. There's that FOMO feeling, the fear of missing yeah. out, you know? So you can approach in a different way, a colourful, creative way to appeal to audiences who could be as young as 15, 16. So you will see a bubble tea brand cross collab with an ice cream brand, a fashion brand, a graphics cartoon brand. And when they come together, they form something that is very fashionable to teens out there. I now know how much marketing goes behind bubble tea and why it appeals to a younger demographic. 
But I can't help but wonder how it might be affecting our younger consumers, like my kids. And I'm about to discover there is definitely more to this drink than just the high sugar content. That will have caused others effect like hypertension, headache, dehydration, and sometimes you will have elevated heartbeats. I'm completing the second week of my bubble tea challenge. And now look to my bubble tea fix as a quick pick-me-up. A little bit like warm, low and cold on top and kind of chewy with things in it. Mm. <sighs> Ooh, that sugar high always hits me in the first sip. I wonder if that's the sugar perking me up or something else. Earlier, I sent some bubble tea samples to Wing Wai. He's a food scientist, which means that he analyzes the composition of food products to determine their chemical properties and to make sure they're safe. This time, I'm asking him to dissect our favorite bubble tea. So what is in our bubble tea that makes us crave it so much? Basically, all of us, we know that inside we have a sugar, mm -hmm. definitely. So the more you drink, the more you will crave for the sugar. However, most of us don't re didn't realise it contains caffeine as well. Caffeine? Like how much caffeine? I mean, is it the same as these other drinks like coffee and energy drinks? As you can see here, a cup of bubble tea contains about 100 to 160 milligrams at a serving size of 400 ml, which is a cup of bubble teas. It is quite the same with your coffee. For a single serving of about 250 ml, you have about 30 to 160 milligrams. Whereas for energy drinks, it's about 40 to 250 milligrams. Mm. And you will see carbonated drinks yeah. or caffeinated drinks, we have a range of 35 to 70 milligrams. In terms of caffeine, do, do we sort of get hooked on it, you know, that we keep wanting more of it? So basically when we feel tired, why? Because there is a signal in your brain that's sent to your neuron to tell you that it's time for you to go to rest. So caffeine will block that signal, mm. okay? So however, when the caffeine effects wear off, Yep. So you'll feel tired and they'll start to have what? Crave for more caffeine so that you stay alert in this case. Ah. So that's why people will start to develop dependency on caffeine. So that's how it works. That's how it keeps pulling you back in. Yes. But is it bad to have uh, too much caffeine? Of course, definitely. Yeah. Because uh, if you have too much, then that will have caused other effects like hypertension, headache, dehydration and sometimes you will have elevated heartbeats as well as your high blood pressure. But these effects is very individual. Those that are more sensitive will be like pregnant women and elderly, children and those that has a history of heart attack. What I'm surprised about is the fact that usually we don't want our kids to start drinking coffee until I don't know they're 15 or at least 18 yes. years old, right? But yet we're okay with them drinking bubble tea. It finally begins to make sense to me why I have been feeling the way I have the past two weeks. Feeling overstimulated, then crashing and feeling more tired than usual. All right, I think I'm just uh, wrapping up my third cup of bubble tea for the week. And you know what? It's been a bit of a struggle. The last half of this drink has just been painful. I I'm feeling just a little bit more, uh, I guess, uh, lethargic on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm not sure if it's a tea or if it's just me. So apparently, it isn't just the sugar that we now need to be worried about. And if youth are being targeted by bubble tea companies, I wonder what all that caffeine in the drink is doing to our kids. I decide to check in with a paediatrician. Dr. Lim Yang Chen is a father of three young children, and he doesn't recommend caffeinated beverages for kids under the age of 12. Many of us were not to give our kids a cup of coffee, but when it comes to bubble tea, uh, actually quite a few parents are quite okay with that. What is your response to that? Children, children are already very active, energetic. They really don't need any more stimulation. Hmm. Beyond that, caffeine also has a lot of uh, problems with it with young children. If they have it too late, 
If they excrete it a bit more slowly, you may cause them to be anxious, they may have issues with sleeping, you get insomnia and all the attendant problems with insomnia, daytime somnolence for example for the kids. So would you say there's an age where it's okay or not okay to have bubble tea? I'd say generally primary school age probably is still something I would avoid bubble tea for, for most kids. The reason because they're still growing. The toxic dose of caffeine is actually about 20 milligrams per kilogram. For the average 25 kilo kid in the lower primary, for example, that would be equivalent to just five cups of bubble tea. And that, that is quite easily achievable if no one's really watching it. We know quite a few kids also, students would want to drink bubble tea when they're studying for the exams. So if they need that little bit of that buzz, Knowing what you're drinking is very important. Mm. i say once you're at the 12-year-old age group, like a mini-adult sort of level, then maybe it's no harm per se, but be very aware that you shouldn't be taking it beyond certain hours. So I'd say probably 3-4 p.m. onwards, you shouldn't be drinking too much caffeine because okay. then it might affect your sleep. And if you're not sleeping well, how are you just preparing yourself for the exam? So it becomes like a vicious cycle. I've learned that our love or our addiction to bubble tea boils down to not just clever marketing, but also the stuff that's inside the drink. And I'm not just talking about the sugar, but also the caffeine levels, which can be as much as your regular cup of coffee, and even more than a can of soft drink. Wow, that's definitely something to think about, especially if you have kids who love bubble tea. If one can't stop drinking bubble tea, is there at least a healthier version out there? I go in search of the elusive healthy bubble tea. Have you ever thought of going without the pearls? We're trying to convince people to go on a healthy version of bubble tea. And I finally find out what drinking bubble tea three times a week for a month has done to my health. Alright, basically a couple of changes. Three major things. I'm giving you all the bad news first. 